Our next destination was visited by Vikings in the 10th century. It didn't go well for the people who lived here. Morning in Osobrero, where the tourists are gone and the village is quiet. Well, except for the Camino travelers on their way out. We all follow Father San Pedro's yellow arrows onto a woodsy dirt road with views over the Osankar's mountains. Three kilometers later, we land in the tiny village of Linieras. After more views and a little climbing spread out over one kilometer, the dirt path brings us to Alto de San Roque. Elevation, 1,270 meters. There's this beefy bronze statue of a pilgrim fighting the wind and maybe a blister. The artwork created by Galician sculptor Jose Maria Acuna has been here since 1993. We continue for a little more than a kilometer to Hospital de la Condesa, population 17. Nevertheless, it's big enough for an albergue, hotel, and probably more cows than people. The non-stop scenery rush keeps coming. We walk along a paved road for a few minutes and then turn left on this trail. A brief but terribly steep climb finishes at another high point called Alto de Pollo, where there are a couple of bars. The route eases up in terms of elevation gain, but on this day at least, we have to lean into the wind, just like the statue. After three kilometers, we arrive at Fonfria, 
Now, according to one guidebook, there used to be a hospice here that was built in 1535. And more than two centuries later, the roof had caved in. And just the same, one account credited the place with having heat, salt, water, and a bed with two blankets. And for the pilgrim who was feeling a little sick, the hospice ponied up an extra quarter pound of bread, eggs, and butter. Such were the comforts of walking the Camino in the 18th century. After a few more minutes of walking, we reach Biduedo, population a mere 31. And perhaps because of that, the village has the smallest church on the Camino. From here, the way descends, sometimes steeply, passing the never dull scenery. On occasion, we can glimpse our destination for the day, Tria Castella. And by the time we reach this gnarled tree, we've hit the town's outskirts. The name would suggest there are three castles here, right? Well, let me save you the time searching for them. They're not here anymore. A long time ago in the 10th century, yeah but they were destroyed soon after they were built by perhaps Vikings who pillaged the town in 969. Vikings in Spain. Who knew? There's a total of eight albergues, seven hotels, and several nice restaurants. Remember Cruz Faro? Yeah. I know that was five or six days ago in ancient history by this point. Well, a similar tradition of carrying a stone started here in Tria Castella, but with a more practical purpose. Seems there's a lot of limestone here. And as part of their pilgrimage, Camino travelers were expected to carry a big old hunk of limestone. Why? Limestone is a key ingredient in mortar. And at the time of medieval pilgrims, the cathedral in Santiago was being built. And boy, did that place need a lot of mortar. So the pilgrims picked up a rock, heavy rocks, and carried them 100 kilometers to Castaneda, where there was a lime kiln. It was just outside of Santiago. I got to say, they made sturdy pilgrims back then. I will leave it to you to discuss among yourselves if we modern Camino travelers have gotten soft. Personally, I would argue if we've reached this point with a little more than 100 kilometers to Santiago, we have demonstrated a fair amount of grit and determination.